Your number four ranked University of St. Francis football team traveled over 600 miles in two days to Aleska, Georgia to face the fast and spirited number three ranked Reinhardt University. And after one quarter, the Eagles were up 7-0. But then the Cougars gained control, rattling off 21 unanswered points, blocking out the altitude and fatigue en route to a 42-24 victory and a berth in the 2016 National Championship game. Mental toughness. Uh, mental toughness is not allowing anything to keep you from reaching your objective. Whether it be travel, whether it be weather, whether it be the opposition, you become resilient and you find a way to come back and exchange punches and overcome. You know, Reinhardt, we knew they were fast. Um, they saw the Morningside game, obviously, and um, they knew they had to stop the run. And if not, it was going to be a long day for them. And, um, you know, they did a good job in the first half. And, you know, the runs that we did have, we, uh, you know, Jay Green broke tackles, PJ broke tackles, Aaron was dragging tacklers. So um, offensively, we did a really good job. Pass protection was really good. Um, and the receivers did a really good job getting open. And, especially on conversion downs, third downs, and fourth downs, um, Keen, Monte. Um, Seth obviously had a great game. Um, you know, Gegner, uh, Nico even had a conversion. So, um, you know, when you're able to spread the ball like that, uh, even if they stop the run, it, it's really tough for uh, a defense when you're able to convert on third downs and fourth downs even. Um, you know, not a lot of teams can convert on fourth and 15 or whatever it was there. So, um, you know, it, it's really tough when you, you can take away one thing, but uh, this just opens up something else, so um, that kind of how we've done it this this uh, this playoff. You know, Missouri Valley, we, we passed the ball really well, ran the ball really well. Morningside, um, we passed the ball we passed the ball pretty well, but it was mainly our running game that got us going. Um, and in this game, it was a little bit of both. The Cougars seized control of the game to start the third quarter with a goal line stand on Reinhardt's first possession. One play later. Justin Green set a new USF record with a 98-yard touchdown run. Well, they had to come back after you know, they got the second half kickoff. They had to go down and put points on the board. Um, so they're down there fourth and one and get stuffed. Well, that took the wind out of their sail, and they were probably pouting a bit from that play. And the next one, they arm tackled and. Justin broke a couple tackles, and 98 yards later, there was a 14-point swing. So uh, that was really difficult to come back. Then they get the ball back, and Marcus Stepp picks it off, and now they're, they're, they're in deep trouble. So uh, again, the, the mental toughness, the tenacity, the resiliency of our players, and now we're getting to the point where they smell that victory, and they, they go seal it. The Cougar defensive back smelled it. After Marcus Stepp returned a Ryan Thompson pass back the other direction for a touchdown, cornerback Wilmer Cole recorded his team high third interception. Then fifth year senior Shannon Swain, filling in for an injured Nashawn Lewis, registered his first career interception as USF matched a season high three INTs. I'm very, very happy for Shannon Swain. He's always kind of been on my not so good list. Um, I've, I've stayed after him. He probably hasn't been too fond of me through his career here. But this year I have seen growth and maturity. And uh, he slipped a switch. And I'm so proud when somebody can prove me wrong, which he has done. Um, he, he's taken leadership. He's taken some ownership in this team. And it's important to him and his work ethic is good, his body language is positive with his attitude and effort. So all of that adds up to good things. And guy in his senior year, and that switch finally comes on, man, that makes the old man feel pretty good. The old man also feels pretty good about his quarterback, Nick Ferrer. For the first time in years, Coach D again took over the reins as a quarterback's coach and Ferrer has responded by setting a new USF single season passing record with 3,801 yards and 48 touchdowns. Well, the coaching individually surely has very little to do with Nick's success. He's a winner. 
he's a student of the game. It's like he's part of the coaching staff. Um, you know, he sits in on game planning meetings. Um, he studies film like coaches do. He has the green light when he recognizes things on the field, which he usually does, to make sure that we're never in a bad play. Um, I, I remember talking to some folks, um, Tom Moore, who was with the Colts for a long time, was Manning's quarterback coach. And uh, he was telling me that Manning is, you don't call plays, you call concepts. And then he selects from the concept of what you want to try to accomplish. And, and we're about the same way with Nick. I might as well get him an office in here and, and let him <laughs> study film and, and be a part of this thing uh, uh, on a full-time basis. I guess if he didn't have classes, we could do that. But since he does, we'll have to, have to wait. Um, neat kid. Gosh, you got to love him. His passion for the game, his love for this team and his teammates, unselfish. And not about himself. Man, it, it's about we, it isn't about me. Um, just has a great desire for this football team to be the best. It's a huge honor. Um, you know, and it sure helps when you have an offensive line like I do, it gives me time and you got guys thrown to, you know, you got guys you're thrown to like Seth and um, Monte, Akeem, Boz, um, Rocky, so um, Gegner, Nico. Uh, so just really it's a whole team effort. You know, you can't reach 4,000 passing yards without some help. You know, it's just, it's, it's, uh, you just can't do it. So, and I have a great um, supporting cast and um, they do a lot and everybody just does their job, um, whether they get the credit or not. And then, uh, you know, it seems like, you know, me, Seth, Jay Green, here of late have kind of got the recognition for it, um, but it's really a whole team thing. It's a whole offensive thing, so. And the whole thing is really coming together for Nick. From the gridiron wisdom he received from a former Cougar quarterback in coach Josh Miller his first two years, to the exploding wealth of knowledge from the current winningest active college football coach in the country with 38 years of experience, Frere just keeps on growing at his position. Yeah, I mean, he has so much experience. Um, you know, he, he just he brings a lot to certain situations where you see it one way, you see it at face value, but then, um, you know, he has so many experiences where maybe um, he sees it a different way. And um, a lot of times maybe that way, that way is better than what you thought. So, um, you know, going from, you know, it is, it is a transition whenever you switch position coaches, um, going from, uh, you know, Coach Miller to Coach Donnelly is my position coach. Um, you know, and, and luckily, Coach Miller did a great job with me as far as fundamentals, um, playing quarterback, mentally, um, physically, emotionally, kind of handling all that. Um, so from what I learned from him, my freshman, sophomore year, I was able to take my junior year and then having somebody a season as Coach Donnelly just kind of helped that um, and maximize that growth. So uh, kind of having both of them um, has been really good for me, I think, in my development. Um, and, you know, it, it goes back to a big part uh, you know, just mentally and, and, and emotionally able, able to handle certain situations. And even this week, we, we talked about uh, one, of our, one of our concepts um, out, of, uh, out of our jet sweep uh, pass play. You know, what, one of our concepts, it, it's, it's usually a front side, a back side progression where you, you, read the weak, you read the strong side and then you go back to the weak side. Um, and, you know, kind of the, uh, the whole, you know, for a couple weeks now, Coach D is saying, you know, that back side's been looking really good. We just haven't hit it yet because over there it's technically my third or fourth progression, um, and you got Seth and you got Seth on a drag and you got Monte on a on a dig. So um, you know obviously you're going to look over there first if you know you're a quarterback. So um, you know, but he, he kind of kept harping the last couple weeks, uh, especially down the goal line. But just you know, um, any position on the field that the backside was probably going to be there. Um, so I ended up uh, I ended up during the Reinhardt game going over to Akeem on a on a conversion and. Um, you know, threw it over there, made a guy miss, and he ends up getting, you know, 15 yards, 12, 15 yards for the conversion. So it's just those those type of things where you might see it, you might see it as face value. Um, you know, you might say, well, you know, this is one to two right here in the progression. Uh, over here is three and four, and it's usually not, you know, your primary read. Um, then, he, you know, you know, he might say, you know, well, I think it's looking good over here. And, um, you know, whenever, whenever you do that, uh, whenever you kind of trust him and, um, you know, trust the decisions that, um, that he makes, uh, it ends up working out for you. And that's just, that's just experience. That's just, you know, being in the business as long as he has, so. 
being in the business as long as Nick has, fans and observers are amazed with how the QB can read through his progressions and find the open receiver. As a quarterback, you always have an internal clock um, going in your head. Um, you know, I always have you know, a two to three second time period. I go to my first two progressions usually. Um, our offensive line does a great job, so usually I don't have to worry about pressure after my, you know, my first second progression. When I get to my third or fourth, fifth, then that's when, you know, um, you start to feel. You know, it's all about feeling as, as a quarterback. And because you're looking downfield, you know, you're looking at, um, you know, you're looking at progression and um, you're looking at certain defenders that you're reading. As a, quarter, as a quarterback, then you have to feel your pocket. If it's collapsing, you need to step up. But ultimately, it's just a feel thing. We work on a practice. Definitely something that when I first got here, I wasn't too good at. Um, and I've gotten a lot better at that. So just kind of extending plays, feeling the rush. So Nick getting better has helped the Cougar offense reach new heights. Like his wide receiver, Seth Coat, who is arguably having the best season of any Cougar receiver in program history with 74 catches for 1,513 yards and 22 touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, he, first of all, he's such a great teammate. He's such a great person. Um, just, a, a, just a real joy to hang out with, to be around. Um, guys just gravitate toward him. Um, you know, just, just a great guy. Um, you know, he, as far as his football playing, you know, as far as being a football player, he's an amazing athlete. Um, he's, you know, he's long, he's big. Um, and he is, you know, he's able to make just miraculous catches. He's got great hands, he's got big hands, um, runs great routes. I think the, the best asset he has as a receiver though, which, which separates, for me, this separates good receivers from great receivers, um, is his catch radius. Um, you know, he, he, you, you throw the ball in, in, in any which way between, you know, uh, it, I feel like a, a 10, a five yard, you know, circle and he's going to grab it, you know, in any which way. Um, you know, that, that just, that separates, you know, good receivers and great receivers in my mind, being able to, um, you know, a lot of times I have to put it in a window, maybe away from defenders, and he's able to grab it with, you know, his long arms and he's got great hands, um, able to make a play for me. So I think just his catch radius overall, and, um, you know, I trust him so much where I can just give him a chance one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and uh, I know, you know, most of the time he's going to come down with it and make a play for me. So. Um, but other than that, he's just a great guy, great person. He's a good leader. He's a leader by example for us. Um, and just guys gravitate toward him. So, And Justin Green, whose postseason statistics are unmatched. Six games, 120 rushes for 1,139 yards and 11 touchdowns. He's, just, he's a special talent. I mean, he's just, he's so, he's so explosive. He's so athletic. Um, and he is, he's just a natural athlete. And I think he's really coming into his own here in the playoffs. I think he's just, he's just gaining confidence as we keep going here, as, as all of us are, I think, kind of peaking at the right time. Um, you know, I think he had a good regular season, but you get in the postseason and, um, you know, he's a different animal. Um, he runs harder, uh, you know, just makes plays for you. It seems like when we need him the most, um, he plays the best, which, you know, you want out of any player. Um, just, you know, a great athlete, uh, you know, can make guys miss. Um, he's one of those running backs to where, you know, a lot of times if, if you're, uh, you know, if you're a coordinator and you're worried about one guy, you're worried about a safety or something coming down, um, more than times than not, then he's probably going to make a miss, you know. So you don't necessarily have to worry about covering up every single body in the run game. Because um, more times than not, Justin Green's going to make a play for you because he's just such, such a special athlete. Um, and he's really coming to his own here in the playoffs. He's peaking at the right time, um, as all of us are. And uh, I think every single week he's gaining more and more confidence, and our offensive line is gaining more and more confidence as he goes, our offensive line goes. So, But as great as those guys are, it takes a team to make it this far, and Nick has much love for all of his teammates. First of all, I think our, our wingbacks, um, Zach Degner and, and Jason Nicodemus, um, have really been unsung heroes this year for our offense. They do so much in blocking. When you're able to have two guys that can block as well as they do and then catch as well as they do too, you're able to slip them out in the flats, you're able to wheel them up the sidelines and they can make plays for you. Um, you know, it just adds to our offense and uh, it doesn't necessarily go unnoticed a lot of times because they might get two, three catches a game. Um, you know, Zach had a touchdown against Morningside and um, 
he's had a few touchdowns and, and Nico's had a couple touchdowns as well. So, uh, but it doesn't necessarily go uh, as noticed as say, um, you know, Seth or, or Justin or even even PJ and Aaron. Um, you know, as far as running back goes, Justin's got a lot of um, the spotlight and you know, deservedly so. He's played amazing. Um, I think PJ and, and Aaron and Aaron is a senior and um, he's ran so hard the whole year. You know and he continues to run hard in the playoffs and just a reliable back. Um, you know you're gonna get uh, his best every single game. Um, just a great guy, great character guy, um, great guy of faith. Um, and then, you know, as far as receiving goes, you have, uh, you have Monte on the opposite side of Seth, who's made a lot of big plays for us, has had a lot of key, crucial third down conversions. Um, you know, doesn't get as much, uh, you know, publicity as you would say, because he's on the opposite side of Seth. Um, but he's had a great year as well. He's another senior and another leader of this team. Um, Akeem and, uh, you know, Akeem is, is playing really well right now, for sure. Um, I think the best of his career um, is, 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 is 60 years. So <laughs> it's good that he's, uh, he's, he's peaking right now for us. Uh, but, but he has played well all year long. Um, and he's, only, he's, he's gotten better as the years have gone on, really, honestly. So um, he's played really well. Sean is just another guy over the middle who's really reliable for us. He's been all year long. Um, he was a big security blanket for me last year when um, Akeem had that injury. Um, he's only continued to add to our depth this year at receiver. Um, so offense, and then special teams, I, you know, Chuck is another guy that just gives a lot of energy to our special teams. Um, you know, he, he, because of, you know, Akeem and, and with Akeem being back this year, he hasn't played as much. Um, at receiver, you know, a lot of times you see him on jet sweeps. He's kind of a jet sweep specialist for us. But um, special teams, he just such, he has so much energy, um, gets the guys going, and guys really feed off him on special teams. That's such it's such a crucial part of our team. People don't realize our special teams. Um, and then I think somebody who's making plays right now for us uh, defensively, special teams, Marcus Step. I mean, he he is he is really he's a young guy who. Is stepping up right now and making plays for us when we need him and he's just he's a playmaker um, guy's just a dude and uh, I think right now um, he's really coming into his own and uh, you know a young guy has a lot of potential um, but he's really seeing it through right now and he's he's only gotten better as the season's going on he's gained more confidence as the season going on so special teams defensively so and what a season it has been Two games ago, Coach D notched his 300th career victory, and now, for the first time in 10 years, USF is back in the national championship game. Well, obviously, I'm elated to have the opportunity once again. I, I enjoy each and every day, and I think if you you know you build a program where there's a solid foundation, um, and you're trying to help young men grow, not only be better football players, but to be successful and make a difference in the world, uh, your time is going to come. Sometimes you got to be patient, even if you got to wait 10 years. But you keep doing the right things, and you believe in what you're doing, and you believe in the kids. Um, good things will happen. So it has been a sheer joy for me, and it has been every year, even the tough times. You know, it's still about the players. You know, sometimes the tough times you learn more, you grow more. Um, at the same time, handling success is difficult because you'd mentioned earlier, it's so difficult once you've, it's easy to get there, no it's not. It's not easy to get there and it is more difficult to stay there once you get there. So there's nothing easy, there's no handouts in life. You gotta go out, put your nose to the grindstone each and every day and get better. It's an amazing feeling. Um, it's something that you know, for me, it's something that uh, I've worked for. My class has worked for going on three years now. Um, you know, for these seniors, four, maybe even five years. Um, for Akeem, six years. <laughs> so, uh, um, but you know, it's 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 truly incredible. You know, we, we came here and we wanted to win a national championship. You know, all those others. You know, conference winning conference is great. We did that last year. You know, undefeated seasons are great. Um, you know, but. You know, if you can only have one thing out of all those things, national championship would be, you know, what you want to accomplish. So, uh, when you're on the cusp of doing something that you've set out to do since you've got here, maybe even for some of these guys, you know, ever since they've started playing football, um, you know, for Coach D, ever since he got here, he's set out to do this. Um, 
hasn't been able to accomplish it yet. Um, when you're on the cusp of that, uh, it's just, it's such a big, you know, it's, it's such a big deal. And it's good we have this week just because you're able to process all that. Um, you're able to handle all that emotion that comes with that. Um, you know, but then next week we gotta work on, you know, we gotta prepare, we're prepared this week. Um, but next week we gotta be able to handle that, um, handle all those distractions down there um, and realize that, you know, our main reason for why we're here is to win this game. You know, it, it's great to get here. Um, you know, it's great for, uh, I'm so happy that, you know, for these seniors and, you know, but ultimately, you know, the task is not complete. I mean, we still have unfinished business and um, we have to win one more game in order to solidify ourselves um, forever. So, uh, you know, that's, that's something that it's, it's such a huge, like I said, such a huge honor. Um, and to be so close on the cusp of that, something that many of these guys, these coaches have worked for for so many years. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it gets you excited, gets you anxious. Um, you know, at the same time, though, we have a task, and, you know, the task is not complete yet. So. To complete the task, St. Francis must beat the number two ranked team in the country in Baker University from Baldwin City, Kansas. The Wildcats bring with them the number one passing offense in the NAIA. Well, you better take notice that they're undefeated. 14 and 0 is not too bad. They're very well coached and they're very talented. They have great speed. Both sides of the ball, but offensively, they're so explosive. I mean, they score uh, three touchdowns in the last five minutes of the semifinal game to get here. I mean, that's crazy, but they found a way to do it. So you better never think it's over. Uh, with an offense with that quick strike, um, man, you better play every down for 60 minutes because they are explosive. Uh, Great speed and receiving core. Quarterback's a good decision maker. Defense are very well schooled. They fit to run well. Good athletes uh, at all levels. Good solid uh, kicking game. So it's the best of the best. That's what it's supposed to be when you get to this point. So uh, it'll be a fun game. Their, their offense, um, they throw the ball a lot. They got some guys on the outside that can run. Um, you know, and, and, and Definitely, you know, you, you as an offense, you get excited as the, you know, the potential of having a shootout, um, especially as a quarterback. You know that that those are those are you know great championship games and you know opportunities. I see them. Um, at the same time, though, uh, you know we're a well balanced offense. We can pass. We can run. Um, I think that presents um, a lot more challenges to say just you know a passing offense or um, you know an offense that may not be as good as running the football as, um, you know, as they are throwing the football. So, um, you know, I, I, I like to think that, you know, we're the more well-rounded team and, and hopefully we can prove that Saturday. Um, you know, at, at the same time though, you know, you, you do get excited for the opportunity, you know, no matter what, no matter who you're playing, um, no matter what team you're playing, uh, you, get an op you get excited for the opportunities and the opportunity to win a national championship is just, you know, um, it's an amazing opportunity that we definitely want to see. So, um, but you do get excited for it as as a quarterback, as you know, as offensively, we're going to get really excited for the challenge we have, um, and uh, you know, we're really looking forward to it. So, and we know Cougar Nation is excited about traveling to Florida to see the guys wearing Cougar blue in the championship game, with the opportunity to bring home the program's first title, because it's Cougar Nation that makes USF football so special. You know, excellence is is expected here. Winning is expected here. Um, Coach D knows how to do it. Uh, I think the players that came before us have kind of set the standard for us. You know, you know, this is how we do things. This is, you know, when we say play Cougar football, this is playing Cougar football. Um, you know, and I think, I think just, you know, I, as guys graduate, um, they pass that on to the younger guys, the underclassmen, and, and they come up and, um, and they do the same thing. So, you know, I, I think it's just tradition. Um, uh, I think that's what's great about this program, the winning tradition, um, Coach D's experience, our coaching staff that works so hard, uh, you know, these seniors every year that, that, that they work so hard and in the off season we work so hard. And it's just really a commitment to excellence and, um, you know, just, just a great winning tradition. Uh, it's something that I felt when I was being recruited here and one of the reasons I picked here. Um, just such a positive attitude, such a winning attitude um, and something that I knew I wanted to be a part of, so. Well, I would think they would be very proud 
of that accomplishment and yet know that they were part of building blocks in the foundation of the program. I mean, we started this thing, you know, we were kind of bare bolts, you know, I mean, we were, uh, gosh, we practiced on the old parking lot up here at that time, you know, didn't have any turf out here, you know, kind of played on the, in mud and in dirt, didn't have anything in the end zone, you know, and had some tents down there on game day. Um, so many things have come about in the last 19 years. And uh, those guys have got to have great pride and feel good about themselves that they have built this tradition. They're all, we're all part of this. So whatever the outcome is on the 17th, and I, we're going to do our very best to, to bring that first one home for our football program. That all those guys that were part of those teams way back from 98 up to this, we're all part of it.